Good morning, everybody. On this date in 1803, October 20, the Senate confirmed President Jefferson's decision to buy the Louisiana Territory from Napoleon, thus setting the stage for more westward expansion. By the way, I'm along the Westfield River in western Massachusetts. This map shows the various chunks of land that were added to our country as we moved west. And each of these chunks has its own backstory and its own drama. And part of the backstory of our event is that the French had explored not only the Great Lakes area and parts of Canada, but especially the Mississippi River and its watershed in the 1600s and claimed it as New France. But in 1763, it went over to the Spanish because of wars and things in Europe. So the Spanish controlled that area for about 40 years. And the big importance of this area geographically is all these rivers that drain into the Mississippi ultimately end up in New Orleans. And New Orleans was a crucial port for American farmers in the midsection there. So who controlled New Orleans? This is New Orleans today. There are some Spanish buildings in New Orleans. Uh, this is the big cathedral in what's now known as the French Quarter, and next to it is this building, also built and designed by the Spanish. And it was in this building that the transfer of power happened when the Louisiana Purchase was finalized. Here's Napoleon in 1800. He's not emperor yet. He's first consul. And because of some political maneuvering with the Spanish, this treaty was signed in 1801, and the Louisiana area goes back to the French again. And Napoleon had big plans for that, but then the revolt in Haiti, which was ongoing, really was a big burden for the French disease and costs. And Napoleon was afraid of war with Britain, so he said, let's sell the whole thing to the Americans. So here's Thomas Jefferson. Originally, Jefferson was concerned only about New Orleans, but when he got a chance to buy the whole territory, he said, great, because this would help fulfill his vision of the United States as a country of farmers. Jefferson, of course, uh, was sort of a gentleman farmer, but there are some contradictions with Jefferson here, and historians have examined these in a lot of detail. So in the early days, the beginnings of political parties get started with the Federalists and the Republicans. Jefferson on the right was a Republican. And notice the second item down is a weak central government. And then as the country's getting started and figuring out how these division of powers work, Jefferson believed in a strong legislative and a weak executive. Yet here he was acting like a strong executive, making this decision all by himself. And then what about the Constitution? Hamilton said, if it's not prohibited, the government can do it. Jefferson said, unless it's specifically allowed, the government can't. And yet there was nothing in the Constitution that gave him the authority to buy land from a foreign country. But he did it anyway. And the Senate ratified it. On this date, that's our event, and here it is happening down in New Orleans, the transfer. So what happens next? Well, Jefferson sends Lewis and Clark out not only to explore Louisiana, but also to see if they can find a water route to the Pacific, which they can't because the Rocky Mountains are in the way. And Eastern Americans start to learn more and more about all the people living in the Great Plains and along the Rockies and all those uh, Native American tribes that are out there. So that's going to be a big part of our history going forward. And what about slave states? So in 1820, Missouri was the first state carved out of Louisiana Territory, and it came in the Union as a slave state. Maine came in as a free state. But this issue of should new lands be slave or free is going to be a big deal up until the Civil War in 1861. And I think, uh, you know, obviously we have many, many states that come out of the Louisiana Territory. So that's the midsection of our country. So if you live there or if you travel there and you come across something like this, which are wagon ruts from the Oregon Trail, you could thank Thomas Jefferson for buying the land from Napoleon.